things today, but one of the things I, I, I want to do with you guys today is show you, um, I've so far presented to you various kinds of debates um, in African-American political thought, um, and but at the same time, I wanted to show you how, at least in some ways, these debates reproduce themselves uh, out in public. It's not just, um, and, and outside of the kind of glare of, say, for instance, or, or the unfortunate incidents connected with um, the issues at Campbell Hall. Uh, in fact, you may be able to catch one of them today. I will be um, discussing, um, I think at like 1240, uh, with a conservative, um, I, don't, I don't know what you would call her. I, I don't mean to be uncharitable here. Pundit, uh, Amy Holmes. Uh, she, she doesn't necessarily feel like the betrayal of Barack Obama was as a chimpanzee uh, shot by the police was in any way problematic. Uh, I beg to differ. So we'll be discussing that today on CNN. So uh, it's sort of ironic that I was going to do this today. Um, which is what I want to do is, is show you, uh, we're going to go through a number of different things where you can actually see representatives of different sort of aspects of um, black political thought uh, in public uh, debating one another around issues uh, in ways that you can, you can actually see, um, you can actually witness some of the, the differences um, in both sort of form, function, and the different ideologies. Um, we're also going to look at how ideologies are portrayed um, in public. So we're going to cover a couple of particular debates. Uh, the first one is, is what I want to show you is, is um, uh, an episode of the, some clips from the boondocks. Um, and in particular, uh, what I'm interested in is how um, what I'm interested in showing you is how often sort of uncharitably um, black conservatism is portrayed uh, in, the, in the public sphere. Um, in particular, frequently portrayed as um, a kind of product of black self-hate. Um, and here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and find some, uh, there's some video coverage of uh, Uncle Ruckus. Uh, a character um, uh, on uh, the Boondocks, uh, who is sort of the Boondocks' representative of black conservatism. And we can, we can see how he sort of takes some of the things that, say, for instance, Clarence Thomas says um, and exaggerates them in some ways beyond recognition in that, you know, there's a kind of uh, version of race pride uh, let me see, where do I find my favorites? Favorites, there we go. Um, so, uh, so we can see in some ways the kind of uncharitable uh, portrayals of uh, black political thought. Let's see. Okay, so here is Uncle Ruckus uh, portraying a black conservative for the audience of the boondocks. So it's a very uh, uncharitable representation of, uh, of black conservatism. Um, so in, 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 in this sense, right, in the world of the boondocks, uh, black conservatism arises out of a deep uh, self-hate uh, on the part of Uncle Ruckus. Uncle Ruckus can't, uh, doesn't connect himself uh, to the black community. He sees, he sees no value in black people. Um, and he's an entirely accommodationist, right? You know, uh, what do we do? We shouldn't march. We shouldn't vote. You know, we're ingrates if we. Um, do any of those things? I, I, I'll show you just just because it's another um, another funny one. Um, I'll show you uh, Uncle Ruckus's uh, discussion of white God.
<laughs> so this is Ruckus's, um, Ruckus's fantasy, right? He's seen God. God looks like Ronald Reagan. Um, and, um, you know, God looks like Ronald Reagan. And Ruckus is, uh, is, is sort of sucking up to him. And Ronald Reagan's explaining to him um, his, uh, his sets of policies uh, and how they relate. And Ruckus is uh, ultimately might be rewarded uh, with whiteness uh, if he um, behaves himself. Um, and black conservatism, at least some of the ideas of black conservatism, can take many guises. Uh, one of the biggest debates uh, in sort of public recently has been um, the fight between um, uh, no, we're not going to watch a pimp named Slickback. Um, has been the fight between um, Michael Eric Dyson, uh, a professor, and uh, entertainer uh, Bill Cosby. Um, Bill Cosby has suggested, um, again, trumpeting a kind of black conservative line that the problems in black communities is black behavior, lack of parenting. Um, and in fact, the, when Bill Cosby and Bill Cosby went on a national tour to sort of tell black people what's wrong with them, um, and but the actually ironically, the first day he made the speech, uh, not necessarily ironically, I think he chose it uh, specifically for this reason, uh, was on the celebration of uh, Rosa Parks' uh, refusing to sit in the back of the bus, um, and symbolically, what what Bill Cosby was doing was is taking that moment to say. Um, our problems are no longer about racism. So, so one of the things is, is that Bill Cosby took that day, um, which is a day of celebrating, of standing up against racism, and turned it not into a reflection on uh, the ways in which racism still might affect uh, black life chances, and turned it into an opportunity to attack um, black youth, black parents, uh, as letting the community down. Um, so we're going to listen to a couple of clips from Bill. Bill Cosby's been kind of controversial for a while in that um, during the 1980s, during the height of the sort of Reagan era, Reaganomics, the crack epidemic, et cetera, uh, Bill Cosby had the Cosby Show, which was the most popular show on American television, which portrayed, uh, if you catch it on TV land or wherever it comes on, is it Nickelodeon? I'm not sure. Um, portrays a upper class, upper, upper middle class black family, two professional parents, uh, five kids, uh, living in a very nice brownstone somewhere in New York, probably Harlem, uh, the nicer streets in Harlem. And um, the show portrays them as, you know, sort of having triumphed largely of racism. The show only occasionally dealt with racism. And there was some evidence that uh, in studies that whites who watched the show um, tended to have much more negative uh, views about black people in general and welfare because they concluded that if the Cosbys had made it, right, uh, why couldn't the rest of black America? Um, at the same time, the show did a good job of sort of portraying uh, at least one facet of black family life, though there aren't many sort of uh, you know, uh, corporate attorneys who have been able to have five children while sort of building their career. Um, you know, generally that's that's not the sort of career path or, or the ability of sort of parenting and career path. Um, so the so the show was pretty interesting and controversial, but it made Bill Cosby one of the more sort of popular uh, people. We talked a little bit about some of it last time. So here's Bill Cosby talking about uh, the problems in Black America. So Bill Cosby went on a, a kind of tour. Um, and you can hear sort of versions of what he was saying, right? Uh, black parents uh, don't help their kids. Uh, black kids make bad choices. Uh, they don't focus on their studies. And this is what uh, and he basically says, look, the, the playing field has been leveled. So now it's sort of up to um, African Americans 
uh, to sort of you know get ahead, and he uses his own sort of personal story so in similar ways that Clarence Thomas does. He grew up um, relatively poor, um, was sort of educated, and one one of the things that's actually quite interesting um, about you know so Cosby took a, a lot of particular criticism about not addressing the questions of racism, um, and also excuse me, and not addressing also that, um, in fact, if you think about it, uh, the kinds of choices that people who are sort of poor and marginalized make uh, are made in sort of very high pressure situations uh, without sometimes the kind of margin of error. So if we were to look back and look at Bill Cosby's own sort of personal behavior, right, um, several extra very publicly recognized extramarital affairs, including accusations of children out of wedlock, um, uh, one accusation of sexual assault, uh, et cetera. The difference happens to be that Bill Cosby has money and resources uh, to having made certain kinds of mistakes uh, to smooth those things over. Um, and those choices don't, don't end up in the, in the sort of negative consequences. Um, on Bill Cosby's side, there is a kind of accurate representation uh, that people who don't have lots of resources um, exist in a situation where uh, making bad choices uh, can be fatal. Um, and that's actually frequently uh, when we do studies of, say, for instance, um, African American, um, in particular African American kids in general, but particularly African American kids in college, uh, they drink less than their white counterparts. Uh, they are less likely to have, have or experimented with drugs a whole set of other things because these are kids who've understood that their margin of error is very narrow. Um, and so the kinds of behaviors that they can engage in are, are much more limited. Um, but Cosby took a lot of criticisms in part because of, for his kind of uh, accommodation um, by people like Michael Eric Dyson, uh, who wrote a book about Bill Co how Bill Cosby has gone crazy and sort of represented a black middle class sensibility uh, that doesn't sort of recognize the sort of problems and difficulties of poverty. Um, and just to show you how some of these debates can at times turn personal, uh, here's an interview uh, with Michael Eric Dyson uh, about uh, some of his criticisms and an interaction with Bill Cosby himself. Just to give you some background while this pulls up, uh, Michael Eric Dyson is a professor uh, I think he's currently at Georgetown, though he sort of traveled around quite a bit. Um, we'll see him in another uh, setting later. Um, and he writes a book, uh, Is Bill Cosby Right? Really attacking Bill Cosby, saying, you know, Bill Cosby is really attacking black poor people who don't have the resources, sometimes make bad decisions, um, but who don't have the resources uh, that they need in order to make good decisions, right? So in one sense, you know, some of the parents um, that Bill Cosby might be criticizing are single moms who may be working two jobs, uh, where going to a parent-teacher conference would mean leaving another set of children by themselves unattended for a longer period of time, and so they, ha they don't have the ability to do those kinds of things, uh, nor might they necessarily recognize. He also does the kind of, we talked about the comparison, uh, like Shelby Still has frequently done with, with immigrants, right? Uh, and immigrants self-select for a lot of certain kinds of positive uh, characteristics. They're the most enterprising people of their society because they're willing to sort of leave everything behind and try and seek out for a better future. Um, not that the lesson of going to community college is a bad one. Um, but here we have Michael Eric Dyson uh, talking about an interaction with Bill Cosby. Um, so if you had any illusions that, that, that all African Americans agree with one another, right, we could see this extraordinarily contentious debate, um, even to the point where they, you know, this obvious sort of personal um, antagonism uh, between uh, Bill Cosby and uh, Professor Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. Actually, Bill Cosby's a PhD as well um, in education. Um, so, and there's a number of different cases. Uh, I'm going to show you some interactions. There's a, uh, you know, when he was first getting started with them, uh, 
uh, Tavis Smiley, uh, who of course ran into his own uh, bit of bother um, with his sort of criticism about Barack Obama not showing up uh, to his National Black Forum. Uh, this is actually one of the first ones, and one of the first one black forums that they had, I'm going to show you bits of it. I'm going to try and cue it up, right, because it's on an old videotape. So here, we're going to have a little less uh, contentious debate than um, Cosby versus uh, Dyson, or um, a little less coarse language uh, than Uncle Ruckus. Um, but some of the most in, some of the more important things. I'm going to show you a little bit of the very beginning as they sort of set themselves up, and then I'll, then we'll pick up sort of mid uh, discussion. And so Tavis Smiley began to put these together, uh, national black forums, where you get sort of notable black people from different walks of life uh, to talk about the sort of state of black America. Uh, one of the controversies in 2008 was this then led into a, a book that he developed on the covenant with black America, which was a book about um, how black America might solve some of its problems um, that was widely disseminated. And he went on a sort of tour uh, that sort of advanced both out of the form, but advanced the format of it. Um, and then what, what actually happened was, is during the campaign, uh, Tavis Smiley, who also appeared on the Tom Joyner show, uh, invited then senator and candidate for President Barack Obama uh, to attend the forum. And he couldn't go, but was willing to send his wife, Michelle. He was campaigning. There, there was a, a set of really important primaries coming up. And uh, uh, Tavis Smiley, uh, turned on then Senator Obama, demanding that he be held accountable uh, to black America. Um, and uh, some would be a little, uh, in fact, and what ended up happening was is that uh, African Americans and listeners to the Tom Joyner show uh, were so angry with Tavis uh, Smiley about this, uh, who I think lives in my neighborhood, uh, or at least I see him there frequently. Uh, I know his office is in my neighborhood. Um, got so angry with him that he was actually fired uh, from the Tom Joyner show. So in fact, Tavis Smiley was held accountable. And one of the sort of issues, um, I sort of actually had this conversation with him himself was, is that you want to talk about accountability of leadership. And you know, what is more accountable than actually being democratically elected? Right? You know, you've never been elected to anything. Right? There's no one, no one has appointed you or elected you, you're not accountable to anyone but yourself in some senses. Um, and in fact, you were held accountable because people disagreed with you and they called the Tom Joyner show and said, fire him. Um, so, but that was a sort of bit of controversy uh, there for which um, Smiley is still sort of uh, smarting in some sense. Um, and still, I will note, a little bit angry. Uh, but he still has his PBS show. Uh, but the, but the issue is, is that, interestingly enough, there's, there's some of the, uh, you can see the sort of beginnings of what was a really positive space to talk about black issues. I'm going to go back about 10 more, five more minutes. So one of the things is, is just sort of listen to the debate, because there isn't a lot of um, attacks of things here. But you can see people are taking sort of very different kinds of positions on a, on a range of different issues, uh, subtly disagreeing with one another, uh, but using a lot of the rhetoric of different ideological trends. Um, that, that come out in sort, of, in sort of black political thought. I couldn't find these tapes until this morning. That's why I was late. I was hunting for them uh, between my two offices and at home. Um, I hadn't used them in a while, so I was, I was looking for them. I finally found them uh, in a little cubby hole uh, hidden away. So uh, who was the community nationalist? Kenny, Kenny Gamble, right? Um, so sort the of standard community nationalist line, we need to take advantage. Not really a kind of critique of uh, capitalism. Who was the Marxist? Cornell. Cornell West was a Marxist. Um, 
who was the uh, radical egalitarian? Yeah, the minister, right? The minister was the radical egalitarian. So you could see the different um, trends in political thought and how they had different approaches and different kinds of critiques uh, based on where they were coming from, right? You could, you could see it in play um, right in that moment on that stage. Uh, you could see people who were representing um, uh, different kind of perspectives, uh, clear perspectives. Uh, Kim Crenshaw and, and other plays, I couldn't, I couldn't find. Uh, we're going to transition into black feminists next week, but uh, she was sort of articulating that through a kind of global perspective. Um, and so we can see actually that, that, that these trends are not just uh, things that are written in books, are not just uh, debates that are, that are happening uh, somewhere you know that I'm really sort of constructing for you but I could just put this video up and, and all the kinds of ideas that, that, that jump out of the pages of Dawson are right up there on the stage uh, being debated and thought about um, amongst the sort of the the, the people that are there um, we're gonna pick up I guess on uh, Tuesday with uh, black feminism we're gonna start off uh, with the, because uh, I'm running out of time today, we're going to start off with the contrast uh, between black feminists, uh, notably, but as well sort of white feminists. Uh, and I'm going to pick that up with a, with a debate between uh, a good friend of mine, Melissa Harris Lacewell, and uh, Gloria Steinem uh, on your, uh, Democracy Now. Uh, thanks a lot. Take care.